think we will have time to discuss after that. But I try to move my already, best. Already part of the objective of this discussion. So good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jefferson Nobre, and my my job is is, is uh, easier than the from the previous speaker because I'm going to talk about the past. So I'm going to to talk a, a little bit about a uh, retrospective about net autonomic networking, and uh, it's not I know it's an ambitious uh, title for for the the presentation, but it's it's more like the retrospective considering the efforts on the ITF. Oops. The outline is a little introduction, uh, autonomy networking at the NMRG, the Anima Working Group, and the Outlook. Next slide. So, it's a, a known set of properties of uh, that we expect in an autonomic system, and it's sometimes it's easier to say which are which are the properties that are expected than to to say what is an autonomic system. But uh, uh, usually, it is, it is expected to be automatic, adaptive and aware. Uh, in order to define that, there are some different um, set of properties that are used. So for example, you have the self-chop or the MAPK, and there are others. But uh, for our concern, we think that an autonomic networking system is an, uh, the application of this uh, kind of properties in the network life cycle. So, for example, we can talk about the installation, the commissioning, the operating, like the monitoring, and uh, this kind of uh, jobs in a network operation. So, as usually, it's necessary to have some, some adaptation in an autonomic networking system. Uh, it's usually used some kind of a closed loop control. So, this is a simple sketch from the Focale uh, system, which is a, a influent autonomic network management system, and uh, the important thing on, in the figure is that it has uh, two different uh, components: the autonomic manager, which collects information from the network and also acts uh, changing, for example, the configuration of autonomic uh, of uh, managed resource and the managed resource, which provide information for the manager. Next slide. So uh, the, the, the autonomic networking was the, the subject of uh, several uh, research projects and investigations in the last uh, few years, in the last decade. So for example, there is an uh, UMF, GANA, and others. And uh, also considering the work in the IETF, there are some efforts. And uh, for example, you can talk about some efforts in SUPA, HomeNet, SDNRG, NFVRG, and the I2RS. So there are lots of interest. And also, and this is what brings me for this presentation, the autonomic networking um, investigations is usually addressed by the network management community. So for example, we can say about uh, works that are published in IM, GNOMES, CNSM. So at this point, you can say that from a network management perspective, autonomic networking is something of uh, is a subject of interest. Uh, in this regards, there are lots of uh, of um, meetings of NMRG that are uh, focused on autonomic networking management. So the first one was in uh, Vancouver. Huh? Speed up a bit on... faster. Okay, so there are uh, the first one in Vancouver, the second one in London. Next slide. The third one in Toronto, and also there is an, uh, a meeting which uh, was held in Rio de Janeiro uh, in the CNSM 2014, which is also there are presentations on autonomic networking. Next slide. Um, in in these presentations, there are. Uh, lots of works considering the definitions of autonomic networking terms, and this uh, leads to two drafts, and that are now RFCs, which are a set of design goals and no goals for autonomic networking, which is the RFC 7575, and also uh, the, the, the gap analysis of uh, uh, 
autonomic networking, which leads to RFC 7576. Uh, and these two works, these two documents, lead us to the you can both which is an important outcome of the NMRG work, which is above for the use case of unautonomic networking. And uh, these are the, the, the docs that appeared in this, uh, in this uh, both, which are from background of autonomic networking, some use cases, and some works on the solution space. Next slide. So after that, uh, the Anima working group was charted and uh, and this, this this text is from the from the, the charter of the group we have a definition of uh, uh, the outcome of the anima working group as a system of autonomic functions that carry out the intentions of the network operator without the need for detailed low level management of, of individual devices which is i think it's consistent with the the the, the slides that the previous speaker uh, showed us and also the goal is uh, as is charted in the group, is not to have an, a complete solution for full autonomous networking, but uh, a, spe a specification of a minimum set of reusable uh, components to improve the, main, the, the, the operation of uh, networks. And the focus uh, in the in the working group is to have a, is is to to work with professional management networks. Okay, so uh, there is uh, in the charter uh, four items for uh, protocols to be developed, and uh, also uh, there are three works that are uh, developing such protocols. And for the discovery and the negotiation of autonomic nodes, we have the GRASP from Brian, which I think it's here, I don't know. Uh, there's also uh, the bootstrapping of a trust infrastructure, uh, which is addressed by the Brisky, and also uh, the development of an autonomic control plane, uh, which permits the communication of the autonomic device, uh, uh, which is known by the, the, the ACP. Okay, so as there is a, a limited set of functions that are uh, defined in the charter, because it's important as an ambitious uh, goal, it's important not to boil the ocean, but to have a more focused, specific work for interesting and the feasible points of autonomic networking. Uh, there are some work which is out of a scope that was presented in the UK and both and after that, and uh, which, uh, for example, can talk about policy intent, use cases, or autonomic service agents. And this, uh, in the charter of the Anima Working Group, is uh, stated that this work can be is encouraged as individual submissions or NMRG submissions. So it's recognized that as an outcome of NMRG, NMRG is a good place to work with uh, interesting work of autonomic network, but it, which is outside the scope of the working group. So right now there are some uncharted work that remains in Anima, uh, waiting for new phases or the recharter of the group. So, for example, there are works on coordination, the intent format and distribution. Uh, and there are also other works that are uh, from the UK and both that are still uh, in the NMRG. And, for example, there is this work about uh, uh, distributed detection of SLA violations, which are one of the authors of this um, of this draft, which is in our working group, let's go, by the way. Uh, so, finishing, I think that I'm <laughs> doing really quick <laughs> this, but uh, the definitions and the goals and the gap analysis of the autonomic network uh, probably need more consideration considering the uh, IETF, and uh, we think that maybe the NMRG is a possible a good home for this uh, discussion, this kind of analysis. So, for example, there is an uh, internet draft about the network, autonomic networking definitions, which is this, it, it should be complementary to the RFC 7575. And uh, he, uh, it is on the state, maybe, as we said before. So, I'm one of the authors of this draft, but 
we're looking for new contributors. So if you want to, to work on that, uh, you are welcome. Um, and there are some other points that maybe also can be, can use NMRG as a home. For example, machine learning. Né? As, as said before, as presented before, it's also something which is really important considering um, self, uh, self star or autonomic systems. And uh, besides that, we think that maybe the definitions of autonomic networking are previous uh, from the, the wave of network machine learning. So probably some, there's some, some room for investigation, try to compatibilize uh, both areas. There is also the works on intents, which I know it's kind of a controversial topic, but uh, currently it's out of scope of Anima, and I think also it's out of scope of Supa. So maybe uh, if you were interested in working, in writing down something about intent, uh, NMRG it can be possibly our home for that. Uh, also, the programmability of networks, for example, considering SDN and NFRG, also are an interesting uh, input for autonomic systems. And also, we know that there are lots of interest in, in, of interest in this kind of uh, network approach. Uh, we can see as, for example, the interest in SDN, RG, NFV, RG working groups, uh, research groups. And uh, works on that also can be done considering, for example, management aspects in the NMRG. Okay, um, so as my, my, my last words, uh, the deployment of new technologies is typically time consuming and labor intensive tasks. So, and I'm saying that because it's important to, to, to concentrate the energy to do that. And maybe the NMRG can do this kind of stuff, you know, like a, a place that different works considering some part, different portions of autonomic uh, topics can be uh, can be joined together in uh, in MRG. Thanks a lot, Jefferson. Uh, I think we are really finishing the session, but I would like to take a couple of minutes just to, to reflect on what we have discussed today. Um, I really like the, the the presentation and discussion we had. I think, uh, at least on my notes, I identified a, a set of key points of discussion. We, we, we came back regularly on that. I mean, the, the, where should we start? What should be the end point of uh, this self-driving network, autonomic networks? We have ongoing work, either in NMRG, uh, Anima Working Group, and other groups even outside of IETF, IRTF. So I think there are um, still some interesting topics that we could tackle in this, in this research group. What I would like to invite you is really to express, uh, we don't have time right now, but maybe you can uh, go to the mic, that what will be the, the first steps we should take in the research group to say, do we start a new document? Which topics, we can sub subset of topics we can identify? What action, concrete actions we can take to really try to bring this work forward? Not just to have this discussion, but to have also follow up of this discussion. So I don't know if anyone wants to propose something what would be the next step, where you want to work. Well, <clears throat> taking into account that uh, Jefferson has named a couple of things that I'm mean, so somehow in, involved with, I think, I think that the point here is that we have several, I mean, places in which we have many touch points and there are, a lot of fussy zones in which you can end on one side on the other. Probably it would not be the bad idea uh, to start by try to um, um, identify gaps and challenges and the, and which are which are the directions to move. In a, I mean, in a, in a document that we we can't uh, we, we can uh, discuss on rather than sharing ideas because it's something that well I can agree with uh, uh, for example what, what you mentioned is about the programmable networks I mean the, the programmable networks in general what do you have uh, any fee on the one hand do you have uh, whatever is called SDN I mean SDN or the like uh, software networks in general and this is something that whenever we move the, the, there will be this position in which whether this is uh, 
uh, software-based networks, whatever, or we're talking about software-based software, software -based network management. It's, it's a little bit, if you think in, term, in the same terms, of when you have an operating system, you have the applications running, and then you have the, the other things that are managing the system that are applications at the end. Um, well, uh, drawing the line is, uh, is challenging anyway, but it would be interesting to have some kind of document yeah. to discuss on. To structure a bit the yeah, yeah, let's call it challenges or, or research uh, directions or whatever, but something like that. And, and uh, I would be happy to, to, be, uh, to be part of it anyway. Thanks, Diego. Um, I would be really interested in two things. One is, um, I, I talk about standardized data models, but I think it's very important to have data models to play with them and be not to have a standard necessarily, but to have an evolving standard as we understand the data better. I know that uh, other people who have worked with telemetry have said, oh, this is a great data model, and then they realize that it's not the best one, then they have to keep changing it. So that sort of fits better in an RG rather than an IETF. And the second thing is, can we have a repository of data? Data is very hard to find. People are scared about sharing data. But if we can have a repository of data, then people can say, let me use that data and try some experiment that I haven't tried before. So there are, there's a thing called Kaggle, uh, which Google just bought, by the way, just so you know. Uh, there are repositories of um, pictures of, you know, uh, and so if you want to recognize a cat, rather than downloading a million things from the internet, you can download this set of data and run your algorithm and say, are you better, are you more accurate, or whatever. So can we, sorry, yeah. So if we could find repository or if we could build repositories of data uh, network oriented data that people could then say let me try correlating this and that or let me try something else um, because that's the foundation and i should repeat uh, i don't want to do machine learning i want a self-driving network machine learning i think will get me there but i'm open to anything else the goal is important and then the technology comes afterwards okay. Thanks, Kiriti, for the suggestion. Additional final comments? We're already a bit over time. Then I'll make it fast. Um, so John Strassner, uh, Huawei, I'll be happy to work with Diego and others on this. I think there's a couple of very important things that we need to work on or else marketing will try and define it for us and we'll be stuck with trying to implement it. And as an architect, I really dislike that. <laughs> um, the first is intent. Everyone is talking about it. It was everywhere at the MPLS World Congress. And it's very, very misunderstood. Um, so, I'm also the orchestration area director for the MEF, and we're working on a definition and solution, and perhaps we can share that here in NMRG and get a wider view on this and uptake. Um, the second is, unlike Coretti, I actually do like machine learning. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't resist. Sorry, Coretti. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, I forget the person from eBay, June or Julie or whoever. Yes, you. You want? Uh, oh, oh, okay. Sorry. I've got uh, bad hearing. Um, but, you know, one of the interesting things in deep learning is that that distinguishes it from prior types of learning is that it doesn't have to be homogenous, right? So as I build my layers of machine learning, I'm free to use different abstractions and different mechanisms from layer X to layer X plus one, which you can think of as allowing different algorithms to provide fine-tuned parts or pieces of the aggregate whole. Right? I mean, this is true for any type of ensemble-based learning. But 
More importantly, none of this is going to work, not just without a standardized data model, because you'll never get a standardized data model. It's physically impossible, right? Because you've got to take into account the limitations of protocols and languages and formats from these different data sources, right? I mean, so instead of that, I actually think you need a standardized information model and maybe not in a homogenous information model, but rather fragments that can be used much like you use ontologies to assemble learning systems that serve as the base for different domains. So this is a working group Just a topic. But quick clarification because I mean, we have been through information model and models and data models a lot of time I think, over, over time. Yep. What you're suggesting is more to have this work more linked to the machine learning. I mean, combining mm, the, no, the, the no. definition of an information model that will be useful for represent, data representation for machine learning. So InfoCal, which Jefferson kindly referenced, <laughs> thank you. Um, we used models to represent facts and ontologies and first order logic to add meaning to those facts so that you could then build a semantic a grid or a semantic network that described the impact of what a particular datum or series of data meant on the rest of the system. In order to do that, we had to be able to normalize things like IP-based data with audio data, with pressure sensitive plates, with all these things that probably weren't even on an IP stack. And so it doesn't matter if it's JSON or protobuf or foobar as a data encoding. Who cares? If you fundamentally cannot agree on what a customer is or what an alarm is, you got a much bigger problem. And that's why you need an information model. And I know that's not popular in the IETF and tough. I mean, pay me now or pay me later. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, I would like to free you for this evening. Um, we will follow up on the mailing list. I think from the minutes, we'll try also to, um, to extract some set of action. And I really would like to see that uh, the volunteers to, to work on the structuration of documents uh, we'll follow up. Thanks a lot for, the, for your time and attention. Thank you. Bye.